Hello, Reformers, and welcome back to A Clash of Kings 4.1. I'm saying welcome back because we've previously done a couple of series on the previous versions of A Clash of Kings, and for this one, I have a bit of a unique idea. It's not, it's not incredibly unique, but it's something that I've never done before, and I think it would be quite cool to have a slight backstory. And the backstory that we're going to have is that we are a wandering duelist slash assassin, and we are going to be building our character in the theme of that. So we are going to be using a rather quick one-handed sword and a shield, I know usually a duelist will not use a shield, but in this case you kind of need a shield for sieges and things like that if we want to be a little bit viable, obviously. And then otherwise we are going to be having a huge amount of athletic skill, shield skill, maybe riding skill, really depends. And then we're also going to be having a bunch of crossbow proficiency, as much as we can get at the very least. So I'm going to try and build something that is going to have a massive amount of athletics, as you can see. Eight athletics, crazy amounts of athletics right here. I'm actually unsure whether I should do something like that or whether I should do something a little bit different, like getting me some wound treatment. I I don't really think that that's going to help us too much, is it? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, persuasion? No. I think we're going to just go full on. I'm going all in with this particular character build. And... On top of that, we do have a slightly different way of going about things in A Clash of Kings 4.1, because the major change that has been implemented by the mod creator is that you require renown for recruiting people from villages and things like that. Now, I am extremely... I, I, I don't know whether I... A Lois. <laughs> yes, I typed a Lois first. Anyway, the point is, I'm a little bit in two minds about this decision. Now, I, on the one hand, I really don't like it. And there's kind of a good reason for that because I personally feel like it is somewhat restricting the amount that a player can choose. And in the grand scheme of things, that is what Mount of Blade has always been about, at least to me, for a player to be able to choose whatever they want to do and when they want to do it. However, this this does kind of prevent you from doing that. Of course, there are various different mods out there that have changed the way that you start and have forced you into doing certain things that you may not have wanted to do. And so there there is, you know, there is something to consider there, but obviously for me I, I I'm not entirely sure whether I'm behind that particular decision, but at the moment, I'm just trying to beat this bandit, to be honest. As you can see, however, it is just utter craziness, utter insanity, that we are able to dodge, block, and do all these kinds of things, because we are a duelist. We are a duelist. I mean, look at look at how amazing... Ah, uh, yes, I was going to say, look at how amazing I am, just dodging and blocking and doing all kinds of wonderful things, and avoiding taking damage. I mean, if it wasn't for that one hit, which, by the way, has been changed. That guy is a much, much higher level than he usually is, as far as I am aware. I think he has been changed. At the very least, I have encountered a couple of bandits in 4.1, because I made a test character just to make sure everything was working as intended, and, well, suffice it to say, they have much better weapons than they used to have. So if you are starting off playing in a Clash of Kings 4.1, then you do need to be a little bit careful. You need to be cautious, careful, whatever you want to say. And yeah, that's uh, maybe a bit disappointing to me as well, because I, even though, yes, okay, yeah, you do need to be careful in the early game of basically any Warband mod, with the exception of ones where you start as king or something. But anyway, the point is, we need to do something rather specific to be able to recruit villagers as quickly as possible. And the specific thing that we have to do is, you saw that I ticked the gather companions option at the very start in the character creation, right? Well, there's a reason for that. It's because I need to take companions here. I need to go on a journey with a bunch of companions and we need to make sure that 
we have some assistance because I'm I'm unable to get any villagers, anything like that, and that is indeed quite a problem. So you need someone to help you? Well, companions are here, so hopefully they're going to be helping me. Now I'm going to be getting all of the ones that I know of that are free, and I think I think I'm going to be absolutely fine. I think I'm going to end up with six. I think I'm going to be ending up with six of them, as far as I'm aware. And the last one, which we're going to get, is Brendan Storm. Now, Brendan Storm, as we know, if you've seen my previous series, you will know that he is a very, very cherished member of our party. As you can see, we have six here, so that's wonderful. And hopefully, we will be able to level him up into an absolutely amazing medic, as he usually is. And we're going to be doing this task for Septon Garibald, which requires us to check out something in Cairn Hall, as well as to go to Old Town. And of course, this guy needs us to deliver a letter as well, which just so happens to be to Nine Stars. And there's a tournament currently being held in Nine Stars as well, which it might be quite nice to observe. And for those of you that have not seen the previous series, I will not spoil these quests, and I will not spoil the endings of these quests as well, because there are quite a few things that happen. Anyway, we're going to be making our way over and hopefully maybe finding some looters. I wouldn't mind finding some looters actually to fight, maybe five or so. I mean, I don't really want to fight too many, but these forests are utter insanity. I mean, just look at, look at how thick and dense they are. It's just like me. <laughs> no, anyway. We're going to go over here and... Oh, wait a minute. No. Oh, we can't go to Cairn Hall just yet. So I suppose that you can kind of count this as a bit of a patrol. And, you know, we're just kind of looking for looters and things in the forest there. Seeming to be a little bit of a failure looking for them. Anyway, it, did I... Wait a minute. Did I, I, I didn't speak to this guy before, did I? No, I haven't spoken to that guy before. Ah, oh, well, never mind. It seems like they've all changed positions now as well, so it's unlikely. Ah, this fellow. I would love to be able to take this fellow, but 25,000 is what you need, which is a huge, huge shame. And, yeah, I don't think I can get any others. Am I, am I correct about that? Maybe. I mean, I have looked through them all previously, just to make sure that I knew which ones were which. So, yeah. Anyway, we're just going to speak to the farmer here. Ah, yes, yes, I am Tom. The elder sent me here to find a knight. True and honorable. Yes, you've been having problems with a white? Yes, yes, a revenant, a white, a ghost. Saw it myself. Yes, okay, well, we're going to see if indeed there is a white infesting. Ooh, very nice. We have an extra companion. Thank you very much for joining me. But, yes... We're going to be going to Cairn Hall and taking a look and seeing whether there is indeed a white infesting the area. Can't afford that. Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Okay, so yeah, I think we've spoken to all of the companions that we can right now. And we're going to go and get into Cairn Hall. Now, this is the thing. We need to try and earn as much renown as we can. This is the current early game goal. And to do that... What we're going to do is we're going to fight as many looters as we can because you can get a renowned value of 3 for this battle, for example. And we need a grand total of 75 renown. Yeah, it seems like a lot right now, doesn't it? Yeah, it seems like a lot because it is. <laughs> yes, it is a lot of renown to be able to recruit some villagers. And see, now that's, that's where it brings me to the next point. I think putting a requirement on being able to recruit at villages is a decent enough idea. I don't mind that at all. I, I'm actually in favor of having a little bit of a requirement, but I do not believe that you should have a requirement as high as 75 renown. I mean, yes, okay, you know, the mod creator can decide to do whatever they want to do, and I'm not going to hold it against them in any way, shape, or form. I just feel as though... If it was me, I'd probably decide to maybe have a renown value of about 25 as a requirement, if you want to have any requirement at all. Because having a 25 requirement does give you just a little bit of incentive to complete the quests. And I think that that was the main reason why the mod creator decided to change how the recruiting works. Because the quests have had a lot of work put into them, and I agree, you know, Quests should, in general, be focused on a little bit more because there's a lot of work 
You know, there's a lot of work that goes into these quests and making them interactive and all that sort of thing. And it is a huge shame when, you know, players will decide, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to do the quests. But that's the whole thing. I feel as though pigeonholing and forcing people to do a quest when it's not necessarily required, like it's not a story-based mod, you know, like if there isn't like a main story or anything like that, then I, I feel like that might be a little bit of an incorrect decision. But obviously, I who am I? Who am I to question a mod creator? I mean, you know, it is a free mod, and it is a highly polished mod, and, well, it's very enjoyable. I mean, I've enjoyed it for a number of years already, so who am I to say anything about that? I think... As long as the mod is still playable, still enjoyable to many people, then that's all that counts. And I'm just saying that the renowned value at the moment that is a requirement on the villages is a little bit detrimental to that enjoyment, at least for me. Anyway, as you can see here, there is actually a maester here. Has he, have you seen a white about here? By the seven, another one. Look, I'm not a white. As I tried to tell that screaming girl when she came up here, I've been sent here by the Citadel to do some excavating, and I'll be gone in a day or two. This cairn really is a marvellous treasure trove. Found a cache of scrolls from before the conquest, and tablets speaking of the Battle of the Bloody Pool. Ah, why don't you just explain to them what you were doing here? Ah, but then I'd have to explain to them what excavating means, and before you know it, they're coming to me to bless their cows and heal their wounds and wed their daughters. Keep ignorant peasants away from me and I can die a happy man. Ah, there you go. So, he's obviously just a bit irritated by all of the ignorant fools surrounding him. Yes, exactly. Anyway, we're going to move back to Goodman Tom and tell him what has transpired, and hopefully he will... Well, we're just going to basically tell him, I guess, that... It was a white, and we defeated the white, and now everything is fine. I'm actually wondering whether Linaria is... Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought I didn't have enough money. But apparently I have enough money. Okay, well, that's fine. She's 250. I think that's, that's pretty decent. Pretty decent price. Anyway, yes. Tom, I've taken care of the white... Truly? Well done, sir. I knew a true knight would have no trouble. I don't look like a knight, do I? Look at me. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Anyway, Maron has advanced in level, which I am very happy about. And I am thinking, do I have some... Do I have a couple of weapons? I have a scythe. Uh, I suppose that will have to do, because Maron actually does not have any equipment at the moment. As you can see, he literally has nothing. So, he literally has nothing, as well as he doesn't even have... 8 strength, which is hilarious in itself. Anyway, we're going to give him another point in strength, and uh, what else? What else? I suppose we should just make him into some sort of wonderful power strike using fellow, and hopefully eventually he's just going to be an absolute beast in combat. Wouldn't it be amusing if he turns out to be our best fighter? Yeah, it would be pretty funny. Anyway, this guy has 4 in surgery and 2 in first aid, so I'm wondering... What should we do with him? Because we have Brynden, who is already giving us six in surgery. Maron is giving us one in wound treatment, but I suppose I should make Sarthos the first aid and wound treatment fellow. Because Brynden, at the moment, has 13 intelligence, but he has nothing in first aid or wound treatment. So I suppose I should make the other guy wound treatment and first aid, and then Brynden can just focus on surgery. But... Me doing that is splitting pretty hardcore what kind of archetypes both of them can turn into. So I guess... Uh, okay, I, I think I'm just... Okay, I'm going to maybe turn this guy into our primary medic. And then Brynden can kind of... Maybe be our engineer or something along those lines? I don't know. But at the moment, Brynden is doing a fantastic job being our surgeon. Now, of course, being a surgeon actually doesn't even matter at the moment because we do not require surgery. It doesn't make any difference because we have companions and they cannot die. So, yes. Anyway, what I'm going to do here is... Hmm. 
I really want to improve my agility. So I'm going to be improving my agility a little bit more, a little bit more in Weapon Master here. And I think I'm actually going to be leveling up Power Strike. I want to be able to hit hard, but I also want to be able to hit fast. So that's what I'm trying to do here. And I'm also going to be specking a couple of points into crossbows here because I'm going to be using one-handed weapons quite often, so the proficiency of that is just going to increase by itself. So me leveling up my crossbows is going to help in the long run once I am able to acquire one. Let's actually just go in here and see what's happening. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any crossbows, unfortunately. I'm going to have to head over, I suppose, to Murr and see what I can do there. But... Yeah, I have a bunch of different things here, a bunch of different clothes and armor and stuff like that. Maybe I should try and... I don't even know. Hmm, that's that's very frustrating, I have to say. Anyway, the one thing that I could do is that if I have enough money, I actually do have quite a bit of money, I could make my way over to salt pans, and I could buy some salt, and then sell the salt, and then with the money that I gain from the trades, I could potentially get some units from a tavern. So instead, if you don't want to gather your, your companions, so if you're playing along with me or if you're playing this and you want to make a new game or whatever you like, then what you can do is you can do that instead and you can just get mercenary units and just rely on trade and so on and so forth. Now, as you can see, the map has changed quite considerably since we last played it. 3.0 was far, far away from this. As you can see, there's actually some mist here, and there is something inside the mist. So it would be quite cool to go over and see what's going on. And we have a bunch of extra things. I mean, as you can see, look, there's a, a town there, old stones. I mean, these are all, you know, they, these all have all been there in the past. But it's really cool to see all these wonderful neutral areas that you can explore and go to. I think that would be pretty cool to find out. Anyway... I think that will be it for this episode. Next time we're going to be making our way, our journey to Old Town, and we're going to see what goes on there. Hopefully we'll be able to earn a little bit more renown, because I have 13 right now. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.